Today we're gonna to be looking at how you choose the correct frame size for you. Now apparently this is still something that confuses a lot of people. We get asked the question quite a lot here, uh, both on GMBN and here on GMBN Tech. So today we're gonna to take you through all the sort of measurements and things that can be confusing on websites and help you try and understand how you can pick the right size mountain bike frame to suit you. Before we jump into talking about how modern frames are measured, let's have a quick look at traditional frame sizing. Now traditionally, all mountain bikes would be sized on the length of the seat tube, uh, and really accordingly to how tall you are. So a shorter rider, for example, might be looking for a 15 inch bike, uh, that's a 15 inch long seat tube. A taller rider like myself might be looking for a 21 inch bike, which is roughly equivalent to like a, an extra large in today's sizing. Now, this was never a particularly good way of sizing a mountain bike because you'd end up with a top tube that was really high as well. And actually the bikes were quite short because the measurements were far too similar to the way that road cyclists measure their frames. Uh, although they use centimeters, because the bike industry is a bit weird like that, the thing that's really important on a road bike is the length of the top tube. On a road bike, you spend most of the time sat down and it's really important to have that position. Now, yes, it is important to have a good length top tube on a mountain bike, but it's far more important to have the bike being the correct size when you're stood up. You can tailor the length of your top tube effectively or your cockpit position from the saddle there with your stem and your handlebars to a degree. You know, if the bike's far too small, you'll never be able to recover it, but you've got freedom of choice there. But what you can't really change is the size of the frame. And the size of the frame is really important because when you're stood up, if you've got a frame that's too small, you're gonna be in a bad position. Now, if you skip back to how, I don't know, let's go back to 2006, and Steve Peters is a great example here. He put out a video fairly recently where he rode his old 2006 Santa Cruz bike versus his brand new Santa Cruz bike, which is 29er. And so the two bikes, the 26 inch against the 29 inch, the, the position, everything about them is different. And you look at them on the 26 inch bike, it's tiny. It looks like his hands and his feet are really close together. And it's essentially because the bike was too short. And yes, he does ride it pretty well, but it does accentuate that. And actually, before modern geometry bikes, I always used to end up riding bikes that were far too small for me. You used to have to make tweaks like ending up with stems that are far too long for the style of the bike uh, just to get the fit right, but then the handling would suffer. So picking the right size bike is really important. Now, unlike traditional frames uh, that would be measured, as I've just explained, in, in inches in that seat tube length, modern bikes tend to be sized like extra small, extra large, you know, anything in between. And it's reflected essentially by the length of the frame instead, which is a far more sensible way of measuring a mountain bike size. Now, if you forget about the height of the bike for a second, we're just gonna talk about the length here. And it's a measurement known as reach. And to get this measurement, you would draw effectively like a plumb line vertically through that bottom bracket axle, keep going up, and you would measure a horizontal line from that to meet with the center of the head tube. And you'll get that in millimeters. That will be the reach of the bike. And this measurement essentially will tell you the length of the bike from the bottom bracket to the handlebars on the bike. And that's important because when you're stood up, that is the measurement that you rely on. When you sat down, the measurement that you actually need will be the top tube length, but as I've explained, you can change that really by moving your cockpit around. By having that long frame in the first place, that gives you your, your actually your fundamental frame position that is so essential for the handling of mountain bikes off-road. Now, as a tall rider, if I was to ride a bike that has a short reach, the effect of that is it's gonna feel like my hands are really close to my feet. So uh, if I was drawing triangles, I would be an isosceles triangle. Yeah, and by having a short measurement at the bottom and a tall measurement this way, you're gonna be really unstable. Uh, feel like you're pitching around on the bike too much and probably you'll notice if your bike is too short for you, you have to move all the way over the front end of the bike when you're climbing to stop it wheeling. And the opposite, when you go down steep descents, you'll be hanging off the back of the bike, uh, basically moving around so much to keep good balance. Now that's probably because your bike is too short and that reach measurement is too short for you. If you have a longer reach measurement or something that's more appropriate for your height, you'll be a bit more like um, an equilateral triangle. So equal sided essentially, yeah? And the effect of that is your body weight would be more central on the bike. Now as a result, you have to move less in both directions or in either direction, whether that's climbing or descending, and the whole time you have a better dynamic position on the bike. So reach is really, really important. Now it's a great way of understanding how a bike handles, because like I said to you, it's all based around a dynamic position when you're out of the saddle riding. 
standover height is probably something not as relevant as it used to be because of the fat top tubes have dropped on bikes. Now traditionally, because you were buying bikes by the seat tube length, accordingly, your top tube would end up being pretty high. But note on this bike, which is an extra large, uh, so seat tube is fairly long on this, but it has to be because I'm a tall person, this top tube is actually quite dipped down, so you've got quite a low standover height. Now, when you see standover heights in geometry charts, it's typically measured from the center of that top tube down to the ground. So that is essentially when you're stood over the bike to help you understand how much clearance you have. Uh, really, on a mountain bike, you want a good amount of standover clearance. You don't want to have a high top tube and struggle when you get off a bike because, uh, well, you do yourself a mischief, wouldn't you? Ah! Now, something quite handy with standover height is is actually across the board getting lower on most mountain bikes. And there's a few effects of this. Firstly, um, if you're a taller rider, your bikes are going to look nicer because older style geometry bikes in large frame size just looked awful with top tube up here, just horrible looking bikes. I mean, this is an extra large and it looks pretty good. Okay, so the other effect is seat tube lengths are also getting slightly lower because it's generally accepted that riding off-road, you're going to use a dropper post. Of course, you know, some people won't choose to run these things, but the ability to run a dropper post with a really good amount of drop, to do that, you need to have a short seat tube on the bike. Uh, and running a dropper post with the maximum amount of drop that you possibly can is a really beneficial thing because it gets the seat out of the way when you're riding technical terrain, uh, and you can lower your center of gravity. So there's you know, added benefits from both perspectives there. Uh, this is all thanks to the fact that bikes are essentially being based around length now rather than the height, which is actually quite wrong. With older geometry bikes, you were pretty much forced to buy a bike that was uh, as tall as possible to get the correct uh, seat height and to get a bike that was gonna be long enough for you when you sat down. But thankfully, uh, these days, because of the fact that bikes are sized by length, you do have the option if you wanna go for a slightly smaller bike or a slightly larger bike. Now, this won't be the case with all manufacturers, but for example, if you're hovering between a medium and large, which I'm sure many people are, you're probably wondering, should I go for the slightly smaller one or a slightly bigger one? Some bike reviewers and some riders will say, go for the smaller one because it's more agile, you can throw it around, uh, it's great for jumping and stuff like that. Other end of the spectrum, you'll get some people telling you to go for the bigger size because it's going to be a bit more stable, arguably a bit more efficient in uh, really rowdy terrain. But the governing thing for this, for you, is make sure that the top tube length is still going to be long enough for you when you're sat down. Now, don't be swayed too much by this, but just note if you're on the taller side, uh, you probably should err to the bigger size uh, between the two bikes. Because if you went for that shorter size, you might end up having to have a slightly longer stem on the bike in order to get comfortable when you're climbing. Uh, this is why you should be observing other things in the uh, geometry charts, like your effective top tube length. Uh, it is an important measurement, but the essential measurement really is the reach. Now, I'm probably guilty of telling people to size up uh, if possible, because you're overall you're gonna get a bike that is gonna fit you in most situations a bit better. Uh, but of course, everyone is different, so you do have to identify what's gonna suit you best. And wheel sizes, well, they kind of affect everything as well. Now, traditionally, mountain bikes would have 26-inch wheels, and of course, you might get junior bikes uh, or very small mountain bikes with 24s. These days, it tends to be 27 and a half inch wheels, uh, and you might see 26-inch wheels on very small bikes or perhaps junior bikes. Uh, but you get 27 and a half inch wheels and 29 inch wheels tend to be the two options. There is no ideal wheel size to go. They do offer different traits and different manufacturers have different ways of interpreting this. Now, for example, Canyon in some of their bikes will make their frame size. Uh, you pick the frame size basically and it comes with a size wheel that they think is appropriate for your body height. So the smaller sizes will come with 27 and a half inch wheels and the larger sizes will come with 29 inch wheels. Now, whatever size that you actually go for and whatever wheel size you go for, it's important to just observe a couple of things. 27 and a half inch wheels generally will be a little bit lighter if you're looking spec for spec the same because of the fact that they're simply smaller, there's less of them. They tend to accelerate a bit quicker and they tend to decelerate a bit quicker. It's a smaller object. And they also arguably could be slightly stronger or slightly stiffer. The bigger wheel has some different effects. So yes, it will accelerate slower and decelerate slightly slower because of that inertia. But the good thing about a bigger wheel is it carries more momentum 
and that's especially good in off-road environments. It means you can just go faster uh, with arguably with less effort or carry more speed on rougher terrain. Now there's another really good thing about 29 inch wheels, they're especially good for tall riders and it's nothing to do with the physical size of them, it's more to do with the height it effectively puts your bottom bracket axle at. Now this is the key thing for me, I don't actually have a preference on size of wheels for the way they perform and the handling traits, it's more about the effects of the geometry of the frame size that affects me. Now on a 27 and a half inch wheel bike, if you draw a horizontal line between those two wheel axles, you'll see the bottom bracket is fairly close to that. But if you do the same thing on a 29 inch wheel bike, you'll see that bottom bracket axle is really low by comparison. Now the lower the bottom bracket is on a bike, the more stable you can be. The lower the bottom bracket can be on a bigger bike, the better it is for a taller rider because you have to get your weight as low as possible to maintain good balance. Now 29 inch wheels, as you can see, the bottom bracket axle is very low, but it's actually an illusion. The bottom bracket height will probably be the same height as on a 27 and a half inch wheel. It's just the fact that your wheel, ax wheel axles are higher off the ground, but it still puts your body weight, nonetheless, below the level of those wheel axles, which means when you're cornering, it gives you loads of stability. Uh, and it's a great thing if you're tall. That said, the 27 half inch wheels have a really agile and responsive feel, which is probably why some of the more aggressive riders out there are starting to choose to run what we know as mixed wheel size bikes or mullet setup bikes, and I guess just because of the weird rowdy looks. And that essentially means running a 27 and a half inch wheel on the rear and a bigger 29 on the front. So you get some of the benefits of the stability and the rollover of that big front wheel, but you have some of the benefits of the agility of that smaller wheel, but also the clearance. Now this kind of came into play, uh, I'd say probably in downhill first in more recent years, where riders wanted the benefit of the bigger wheels, but some shorter riders were struggling with the clearance between them and that wheel. You think on a big suspension bike, you're gonna get clearance issues with the amount that that wheel is moving up and down, and you negate that by having the smaller wheel. So there's technically three options available to you there. Now, if you wanted to go for a mixed wheel size, you can't just jam a smaller wheel on a 29 wheel bike. It's just not gonna work. You need to have a bike that has appropriate geometry adjustments to suit that, uh, which will likely be uh, frame chips and stuff like that. And a frame manufacturer will tell you that or a dedicated bike that comes available like that. So there you go, there's three options available for you on wheel size, all offering better things. Arguably, 27 and a half inch wheels are gonna be better, uh, full stop for smaller riders, and it's more because of the fact the physicalities of squeezing a, a, basically a tiny frame in between 29 inch wheels can be very difficult. It can be done, and some frame manufacturers offer that, but generally, the smallest frames will be 27 and a half, and the bigger frames will be 29. Okay, so that will help you understand how the measurements are affected by the sizing, but how do you choose the right size bike for you? Well, the easiest option right now, if you want an answer, is to go on a manufacturer website. Go on Canyon's website, go on YT's website, go on Trek or Specialized website. There's loads of manufacturers, pick one. Go on there and probably nine times out of 10, you're gonna get very close to your optimum size because of the fact that manufacturers are actually really clued up these days. Bike sizing has got leagues better since mountain bikes have been sized by the length than by the height. Now, of course, you might be sitting between two sizes, between a small and a medium or a medium and large, and in which case you could take a gamble or do the best thing, and it's actually go to a bike shop and sling your leg over a bike. Now, if you're unable to get on a bike you actually wanna buy, like this new proof or whatever, sling your leg over another bike that appears to be about the right size and get the shop attendant to help you with your sizing. They'll know straight away if you should go the smaller or larger route, and then accordingly you get the geometry of that bike. Once you've got that, then you can start figuring out your ballpark region of reach, and then suddenly, the geometry charts on all the websites will start making a bit more sense. Uh, of course, you shouldn't just buy a bike by numbers. In the ideal world, you want to test ride a bike and you want to try a few different brands because no one brand is perfect for anyone. Uh, there's a lot of different options out there for you, but hopefully this has made you understand a little bit about the differences between reach measurements and top tube measurements and why they're important in mountain bike sizing. Uh, if you've got any questions, let us know in the comments underneath. Of course, we can go into more specifics, but uh, well, hopefully this has been helpful for you. See you in the next video.